better give God some praise. Acceptance, sure we'll find it here. Authenticity in this atmosphere. Anticipation with a lot of action. We take it so far. Welcome to the lighthouse, lighthouse. Yo, here. Let me introduce you to my father. Welcome to the lighthouse, lighthouse. His name is Jesus the Christ. Welcome to the lighthouse, lighthouse. Yo, here. Let me introduce you to my father. We all gotta praise. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Take Action. I am Pastor Keon Henderson. I am privileged to give leadership to the Lighthouse Church here in Houston, Texas. And it is a joy to be in your home, your office, your living room, your automobile, wherever we're e meeting. What an honor it is. You know, we used to do Bible study or midweek service. And we have several hundred people, but the impact that we're getting by doing this online, I'm so enthusiastic about. Now we're gonna still do in-person events, uh, but I believe that connecting with you this way is allowing us to reach more people for Jesus in a more streamlined fashion. So thank you. Matter of fact, do me a favor and share this link with somebody so that somebody who not who's not a customarily are accustomed to being with us on, on this day, uh, will be able to join us and also share it so that somebody else can be enriched. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube page. We got a goal to reach 300,000 subscribers. And uh, I think we're well on our way to that. So help us to reach that goal because if we're reaching 300,000 people every time we go live for the sake and the cause of Christ, I think we would be putting a dent in the enemy's camp. And also we would be ringing the praises of God in the kingdom of heaven. So help us to achieve that. Hebrews chapter 12, verse two <clears throat> is the substratum of our discussion today. And the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, one of my favorite scriptures, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of god i'm going to start this lesson off with a question but i want to give you the subject matter so you'll be able to find it when you're searching for it today's lesson is called understanding the assignment understanding the assignment let me ask the question. Have you ever felt that you were thrown into a situation that you didn't ask for? But let me ask it this way. Have you ever been thrown into a situation that you didn't ask for and or felt that you didn't deserve? I'm just going to put that out early because to me, That question has all kinds of ramifications. Have you ever felt that you were thrown into a situation that you didn't deserve, that you didn't ask for, that you didn't see coming? You didn't do anything to propagate the response of the universe, the people, the job, the spouse, the friend, the coworker. This is the th this thing just happened to you. Because when things like that happen, then the next natural thing is we start taking inventory of what did I do to cause such a calamity? What did I do to have this in biblical language to be fall? I treat everybody I can, right? I'm, I'm not perfect, but I do right by people. I give to the poor. I, uh, I speak kind. And most of you will even say, I'm even kind when I don't feel like being. It. Um, I live, a, if, if my life isn't pure, I'm telling you, it is as best as I know how to live it, right? Is that how you feel? Not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Don't get it twisted. 
I make mistakes. I'm speaking for all of us. We make mistakes, but I can't understand how I keep ending up in situations that I don't deserve, that I did not cause, and that are not a result of my own missteps, behaviors, or antiquated thinking. Jesus would come right alongside you and say, you know what? Um, I get that because I, I lived a pure life. This, this is Jesus. Jesus didn't do none of what we do. None. When I say none, I mean none. Like you could pick out somebody and say, they did half of what I did. And I didn't, Jesus ain't do, he ain't lie to nobody. <laughs> he didn't misuse nobody. Jesus doesn't have any children that don't live with him or that he's not taking care of. Jesus didn't birth any children that are with their stepmama. Jesus didn't do none of the stuff we do. Jesus never, Jesus never uh, uh, lied to anyone, as I stated. Jesus never betrayed anybody. He never misused anybody. He was never jealous of anybody. He was never envious of anybody. He never had pride. He was never arrogant. He never had an ego. He, he, he never gossiped. He didn't do none of the stuff that he went to the cross for, for us that we might have a right to the tree of life. He lived a pure life, free from sin. I think we can all agree on that. Um, so if there was ever anyone born on this earth who didn't deserve the cross, it was Jesus. However, he went through more difficulty than all of us combined. So when I look at the difficulty of the life of Jesus and look at the purity of the life of Jesus, then I must surmise that all difficulty doesn't come because we lack purity. That everything that is going wrong in your life is not going wrong because you did something wrong. Some of it must be because of another reason. When you get a chance, I want you to read Mark chapter 9. This is another scripture that I am adding to the efficacy of our argument. Mark chapter 9, there is a blind man who the text says was blind since birth. And in those days, they believed that if a person was blind since birth, that it was the result of the sins of the parents, either the mother or the father. And so when they saw this young man who had been blind since birth, the question according to the culture is, who sinned, this man's parents, or did he himself sin? The answer subsequently comes as a result of the inquiry, and they say neither sin, he is simply blind for the sake of the gospel that there are some things that happen in our lives for a bigger purpose than our own imperfections. And that you have to stop looking at life and its difficulties as a sequential set of events that are thwarted at you by God's divine puppetry and plan because you were not perfect. There are some things that are what they are. Everybody just type, it is what it is. It is what it is. Like I said, if there was anybody who ever deserved not to have a bad day, it was Jesus. However, he was wounded for our transgressions. Ooh, don't get me excited because I love the Bible. Bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was placed up on him and by his stripes, we are healed. He was marched up the Via Della Rosa, beaten on the back with the cat of nine tail, 39 lashes on his back, flesh removed, crown of thorn placed on his head until he bled, speared in the side, spat upon, beard pulled from his face, bloodied, bludgeoned. 
and yet he was pure. Why? Must someone who has done only right endure so much wrong? Why? Because, here it is, it was a part of God's plan and procedure for his life that salvation be brought about through this way. What if I were telling you today's message was about the fact that every painful path and place you've ever experienced is bringing you one step closer to your own personal resurrection? And what if you would begin to realize that the more pain you endure, is the precursor to the promises you will enjoy. Mm. Frederick Douglass said it this way. He said, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. I am telling you right now, what you are calling struggle, heaven recognizes as progress. That you think that you're fighting and you don't recognize you're in the good fight of faith. That every devil and demon and giant that is coming up against you is actually become a footstool so that you can reach your destiny. Jesus was successful at Calvary. Hear me. Hear me, please. Jesus was successful in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus was successful in the presence of Pontius Pilate. Jesus was successful in the presence of Judas and the Sanhedrin council. Jesus was successful because he understood the assignment. This statement, understand the assignment, if you are anywhere alive and not under a rock, you heard it somewhere. Under He understood the assignment. Oh, look at how he dressed. He understood the assignment. Look at what how he, was, he understood the assignment. Go on TikTok. It's everywhere. Instagram. Understanding the assignment is everywhere. It, it actually is saying that the person got it, understood it, performed beyond what was required. But I got a word for you right now. I don't know if y'all ready for this. Producers, I don't think they're ready for this one. Y'all, y'all might have to get ready for overload right now. Because if anybody got any Holy Ghost, I'm talking to my producers right now that are man in the cameras. Y'all listen. If these people got the Holy Ghost, y'all about to see comments roll through. If they ain't got the Holy Ghost, you might not see nothing. Now, I don't know who I got with me. But everybody's talking about understanding the assignment but all growth comes from accepting the assignment this ain't about what you understand this is about what you accept god if i gotta go through this though you slay me help me holy ghost Yet will I trust you. If I got to lose the cattle, if I got to lose the money, if I got to lose the friend, if I got to lose the job, if I got to switch cities, if I got to move, if I, whatever it is, I not only understand the assignment, but I accept the assignment. Now, let me add this so that you will understand that Jesus also, he not only understood the assignment, he not only accepted the assignment, remember, he was human. So the Bible says that he understood the assignment, he accepted the assignment, but he also despised the assignment. He says, listen, if it be thy will, let this bitter cup pass from me. I don't want it. I would wish it on, wish it on my worst enemy. I, I, I don't desire it. And, and I don't have to pretend like I want this. But if you say so, nevertheless, not my will. Help the people, Holy Ghost. But thy will be done. Jesus says, if this is what I got to go through.
to become what you want me to be. I will go through it for the sake of the gospel. And the Bible says that he, here it is, verse two, meaning the author and finisher of our faith, set himself to endure the cross. He understood it. He accepted it, but he set himself to endure it. Now listen, that word endure, hupomeno in the Greek, hupomeno, compound word, hupo means to, 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 to be under, and meno means to stay. So what he was saying is, I endured it. I knew what you were putting on me, and the pressure was so heavy that in the Garden of Gethsemane, I bled without anybody striking me. I bled from my pores. I complained and I cried out, Abba, Father, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? I've gone through all of that. But because you initiated the work of this cross, he hoopamento, he endured it, which means that even though it hurt, he stayed under it so that it could teach him. He stayed under it so that he could subdue it. He stayed under it so he can conquer it. And here is the problem. Most of us, whenever we are confronted with any kind of pain, we don't have the patience to stay under it long enough so that it can teach us the purpose of its arrival. We're so apt to want to get out. And I am with you. I've done it myself. We want to abandon the situation. We want to get out as fast as possible. And we leave the scene of the classroom without learning the purpose of the lesson, leaving us ignorant of the lesson that the trouble came to teach. He endured it. Everybody say endure. Oh my God, you might not be able to be rich, but you can endure. You might not be famous, but you can endure. You might not be able to, to buy whatever you want, but you can endure. You might not be able to move tomorrow, but you can endure. You might not be able to lower the interest rate, but you can endure. You might not be able to pay off the student loan, but you can endure and take those pills and throw them in the garbage can and take that alcohol and pour it down the seat and take those suicidal thoughts and put them in the background of your subconscious and live the life that God has for you because you are built to endure. You are the head and not the tail. You are above only and never beneath. You must endure your, must Jesus bear the cross alone? Then you and I go free? No, there is a cross for you and a cross for me, a consecrated cross we must all bear until death shall set you free. You must learn to endure. Hupomeno, everybody say endure it. In other words, stay under it, stay in it, fight the good fight a little while longer. And he who has began a good work in you shall establish it until the day of Jesus Christ, but he cannot establish it if you quit before the day is over. Sometimes you got to stay in the grave for three days, even though you have the power to get out in three minutes. Sometimes you got to stay on the cross, even though you have 12 legions of angels. According to the Bible, he had 12 legions of angels that he could have called and the whole deal would have been over. Which means that the best of us. Learn to delay our power, even when you have a reason to use it. regardless of the weight and the oppression and the stress. Jesus was so stressed. Do you understand me? He was so stressed that he sweat blood and yet he endured it. Betrayed by a friend and yet, come on, say it with me. He endured it. Disciple cut a man's ear off. That's battery with felony intent. And he endured it. Beaten, nailed to a cross. And he endured it. Why? Because he understood the assignment. He knew that he must needs, according to his own words, suffer the cross. And he knew the only way to accomplish his task was through the struggle. What if I told you? I feel like I'm in a pulpit right now. I feel the Holy Ghost. What if I told you the only way out is through? Mm. What if I told you he ain't taking you out of the fire of the furnace? 
that he'll get in it with you so you can go through it. What if I told you he's not going to take you out of the lion's den? But he'll change the nature of the lion. What if I told you, Elijah, that you're going to have to be by the brook of Kerith for three years and there will be no rain and no food? But in the fine print, I'm going to send a raven to bring you meat there. You better learn to understand and accept your assignment. Sometimes your assignment is to endure a situation because sometimes the only way out is through. Somebody type the only way out is through. 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 Sometimes the assignment is to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes the assignment is to forgive the guilty and not seek an apology. Mm. Sometimes the assignment is to hold to his hand. Sometimes the assignment is to wipe your tears in private and produce your faith public. Sometimes the assignment is to wait on the Lord and they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. The European root word, endure, deru, D-E-R-U, the European root word, deru, it means to be firm. It's where we get our English words, durable, duration. God is saying, I'm making you durable. So that you can take a licking and keep on ticking. I put difficult people around you to make you durable. I made the job a little bit harder than you really wanted it to be because I have a place. Listen, thank you, Holy Ghost. I have a place that I'm getting ready to send you where you can't be fragile when you show up. Your feelings can't get hurt easy. You're going to have to have tough and thick skin for the level that I'm sending you to. So everything that you've been through was hardening you for durability. So your testimony could be duration. I'm giving you durability. I'm giving you dur duration. And that only comes through endurance. That's why your child has a learning disability. Because I am, I didn't give your child ADHD so that you could serve me. But because your child has ADHD, I can use it to get service out of you. I, I didn't. Let you lose your mother so that you could serve me. But because you lost your mother, I can use you to serve me. I didn't make the bank, make you bankrupt so that you could have a testimony. But because you did file for bankruptcy, I can use your testimony. Durability, duration, endurance. I know, I know when you're holding life in the grip and you're white knuckling life, barely holding on, feel like giving up, feel like throwing in the towel, then some preacher gets on the internet and has the audacity 
without knowing the specifics of your life to tell you to endure. It's almost sound like I'm cussing at you. It's almost like profanity. Endure. You don't know what I'm going through. This ain't easy. Most people quit when they endure what I endure. I've been enduring. Jesus despised the cross, so I'm not mad that you made it. But he endured it because he understood the assignment. Can I give you a scripture, Ecclesiastes 9 and 11? And I'm going to read the scripture and not give you the subsequent soliloquy that we've wrapped around the scripture. To water its efficacy down. Ecclesiastes 9 11 says the race is not given. To the swift. Nor the battle. To the strong. Here's where we water down the efficacy of the verse because we say the race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but the one that endures to the end. And that is not what the scripture says. It says that the race is not given to the swift nor the battle to the strong, nor riches to men of understanding. Nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happens to them all. God's plan isn't that you remain in this difficult situation forever. His plan is for you to operate in a place of vitality and victory and ultimately resurrection. Hmm. Somebody just said this is the endure season. I'm in the endure season of my life. There are times, my brothers and sisters, when nothing can be done but to wait on the Lord. Chandler Moore said it so good, wait on the Lord. With Maverick music, wait on the Lord. He will renew your strength. So wait, I say, wait on the Lord. Now, I'm a big fan of gospel music and my friend Stephen Furtick wrote a song along with some other writers. And it's the song Gyra with Elevation Worship and Maverick City Music. And, and told Pastor Steve that that song has one of the greatest lines that I've ever seen in a song. It says, I wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. You don't have to impress God. You just got to endure he said, it doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I've never been more loved than I am right now. When God sees you struggling and straining, he is responding to you the same way he did when he saw his only begotten son on the cross. When Jesus said it was finished. All power in heaven and earth. Conspired. To let the devil know that this was a God moment. The sun refused to shine. The moon ran down in blood. There was an earthquake in the land until graves were opened. And in three days. He got up with all power in his hand. If you will endure your cross, you will experience your resurrection. God touch my brother and my sister right now. For some, this was the word of the year for them. Web it into the deep ventricles of their heart 
so that every time their heart beats, it speaks endure, 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 endure. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to give you an opportunity to give right now. This seed, as you give through your struggle, is a, a way of weathering your financial storm. I want you to endure it. Perhaps you're so financially wealthy that a couple of dollars you wouldn't even feel. I want you to be sacrificial in this moment today. I want you to sow into your endurance. You can look at the Take Action link in our Givelify and our text to give and that goes to supporting this ministry and to make sure that we can continue to produce quality content. This is our investment into your life. Your investment into this ministry keeps us in operating fashion. I love you. I thank you. They're going to put all the instructions on the screen on how you can give, text it online, the app, website, the whole nine. Look for a return on this seed. I feel it in my spirit. Look for a bountiful blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. I love you. I'll see you next week on Take Action. God bless you. What an amazing time we had in the service today. The word was phenomenal. Listen, if you haven't had an opportunity to join our church, the information is on the screen. We want to connect with you. Or maybe you're saying, hey, I just want to sow a seed into what they're doing right there at the Lighthouse Church. Well, listen, the information is also down on the screen. We want to help you connect to a greater mission. Listen, I want to pray with you because the word today, I know it's settled in someone's spirit. It's changing your life. So come on, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just want to say thank you just for everything that was said today. God, we thank you, Lord, for all the ears and the hearts that received this word because we know that you're challenging them and transferring them and pushing them into a new dimension in you. God, we just want to ask, God, that you lift them up Whatever the issue is in life, we pray, God, that you deal with it and work it out right now. God, we just want to say thank you. All these blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, we can't wait to connect with you. Remember, share this message. Share this on, on every platform you have. Someone needs to hear this word. We love you. Can't wait to see you again. Bye-bye. What's going on, family? If you're watching this video, you've already decided that you feel my vibe. You already have decided that you like something about the Lighthouse Church. And guess what? We are looking for people to minister to who look just like you, who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who believe he is the sustainer and creator of the world. And we use this social media internet platform to spread the gospel all across the world. And that includes coming directly into your house. Lighthouse 2.0 is simply a group of people who say, you know what? We either can't make it to the sanctuary or we don't live in the city, but we love the ministry that is coming out of that house. And guess what? We view you as one of our own. So I want you to tag, text, or tweet anybody you know that needs to hear a word from God. Share this thing so that way we can actually be in line with the Great Commission going ye therefore into all the world, teaching people about Jesus Christ. Lighthouse 2.0, that means that you are a part of our family and you are friends that we have never met, but soon hope we can. Oh, and by the way, can I tell you what I tell all of the people who stand in line? Give me 1% of your trust. I'll earn the other 99. Give me one year of your life and God will change it. God bless you, Lighthouse 2.0. I'll see you hopefully online or in person.